What's up guys, in this video we're going to be taking a look at some LSP completion symbols for NeoVim uh, for COC. You can also set this up for native LSP too. Um, I don't really know how to do that right now since I don't have native LSP set up, uh, but I know that is possible. Uh, I might do a video on it in the future. So you'll be able to find all of the documentation and you know all the links that I'm going to provide in this video over on my blog. Uh, and there are a couple useful links here to uh, kind of set this up yourself and customize it if you want. And also to get an idea of what these things are, what these LSP symbols are, or these IntelliSense symbols are. Alright, so the first thing you're going to want to look at, and maybe before we even go look at the, um, before we go look at, you know, the description as to uh, what these symbols mean, we should just go see what these symbols are and where you might know them from. So over here on the right, I have a um, just you know a file opened up, like a code file opened up in VS Code. So if I start to type something like CONST for const, right, you'll see, and this is a keyword. Now you know it's a keyword if you've written JavaScript before, but your editor will actually tell you it's a keyword, and you actually don't see it anywhere that it says like, okay, this is a keyword. But if you look at this um, this little symbol here, this actually means keyword. Now you may not know that, you may have just ignored these symbols before in VS Code and just not even like thought about them at all. But it's kind of helpful when you know like, okay, this symbol means keyword. So if I'm new to a language or something like that or new to some particular piece of a language, if I see this little symbol here, I know it's a keyword. So what is a keyword specified by? Um, it's these little lines, these like little random lines here and then like a little box, right? Um, now. That's, to me, it's totally arbitrary, right? Like, you'll see that all of these things mean something like this little rectangle uh, inside brackets, it means something, and then a rectangle outside of brackets means something else. I guess that's as far down as it goes. But there's other things too, like if I start to type like, for instance, like import or something like that, you should see some other things or, you know, whatever, right? You'll see like this purple box or you'll see like this three solid lines with a dotted line under it. And you'll see what these all mean in a second when I go check out the IntelliSense uh, website. All right, so we'll head back over here, and this is the first link in the blog here. Um, you can head over here, and you just have to scroll down a little bit to find this list uh, from the link I have in the in the uh, in the blog. So <clears throat> when you find this list, you'll see okay, methods and functions uh, and constructors constructors are all symbolized by this purple box, right? And variables are all of this rectangle inside these uh, these square braces, and a field is just a regular rectangle. And you can start to see like some of these are pretty, you know, like already those are very arbitrary. Um, you know, like an interface is like these two dots and a class. I guess you can kind of see how this class is kind of a thing because uh, it's like this. I don't know, like a couple things like branching off of one big thing, right? So some of them kind of make intuitive sense. Some of them just seem totally arbitrary to me. Like why a property and an attribute is like a wrench. Like, I don't know, whatever. Um, so this is kind of like the way that VS Code has it set up. And the reason I made it kind of look like VS Codes is because every now and then I'll use VS Code uh, because you know I'm working in Java or something like that. And I just think it's easier to kind of like do some stuff in Java and VS Code than it is in pure NeoVim, right? Um, so I wanted it to be similar or at least as similar as I could get. Now this is what I kind of came up with over here for all of my symbols and you're going to need like a nerd font kind of language that has the, all of these glyphs like kind of enabled and then you're also going to need somewhere to like find them, right? So also in the blog, I have a link at the bottom here over to nerd font icons and I have a whole video, uh, by the way, on setting up COC and on setting up nerd fonts. So if you don't have COC yet, you can check out my video probably in the same exact playlist about setting up COC. And then you can also check out another video I have, it might be in this playlist, about nerd font, um, nerd fonts and nerd font icons. So we're gonna head over to this link here and there's a cheat sheet here for all of the, uh, for all of the different symbols you can have with a nerd font, right? So there's like a ton of them and going through this entire list to kind of come up with stuff that was pretty similar to uh, VS Code. It took a pretty long time. I mean, I doubt you're gonna be able to find ones that are closer than the ones I've picked out over here, but you might be able to find a few. And also you can kind of feel free to go through here and set up whatever you want, right? Like if you 
you know, don't care about it being similar to the ones that are over here that are already, you know, built into VS Code and you don't even use VS Code, you can kind of set up any symbols that you want, right? Like you don't even have to have symbols here. Uh, they're just, it's under this thing called suggest uh, completion item kind labels. And it'll be in your coc settings.json. Again, you'll know what that is if you go check out my video for uh, coc. But like I said, you don't have to have like symbols in here. Like for a method, you could just like type out method or just put like an M if you wanted to. Um, but I'm just gonna go with, what, C, uh, with uh, what VS Code has because every now and then I use it and I'm just used to these. Like these are all burned into my memory, right? Um, or at least as close as I can get. So I was able to find like this box and I think that's pretty similar to, you know, the ones that VS Code has. So if we come over here, we have this box here. Now those are, these are like colored, but you know, whatever, what are you gonna do? Um, so that's pretty close. Uh, this like, I used a different kind of box inside of uh, brackets here for variables and the, you know, that same box for fields since that's kind of how this one is here. Uh, type parameters, I don't know, it's kind of close. It's not like, maybe if I would've found better arrows, I guess. Uh, constant, it's pretty close, right? Um, I tried to use, I don't know if you can see, but I tried to use this symbol up here. And there's always weirdness around these symbols. Like if you're moving around, like at least for me, I don't know if maybe it's my terminal or something like that. Um, I'll have to check it out in a different editor. But if, at least for me, like if I'm moving around, like some of these symbols will just like move weirdly. Like if I, let's see if we can find one. I know it happens for like the folder. You see like how I'm moving around? Like, yeah, that'll just happen. So, yeah, anyway, you can see how they're pretty close. Like, some of them are like spot on. Like, if you look at this uh, color uh, palette here, and this is one of the one that, ones that actually makes sense to me. Like, this, they have a color palette here, and it's just like, oh, well, that makes total sense, but how come, like, I don't know, like, values and enumerations is like this, like two boxes with lines. I don't know if there's, like, anyone has a real rationale behind why these are the way that they are, but I think a lot of them are pretty pretty arbitrary and you can just, you know, like I said, you know, choose whatever you like and put whatever you want here. But some of them I got pretty close. Like if you look at um, snippet prefixes, you can see this snippet prefix is pretty damn close. It has like two solid lines and two dotted lines, whereas this one has like three solid lines and one dotted line. Um, obviously the wrench I was able to get, modules, so on and so forth. But you can check this out and kind of like, if you can burn these into your head, you'll just move faster. You'll go like, oh, this is a field, this is a keyword, this is this and that, just by looking at it in the completion menu. All right, and so we'll just kind of go over here and kind of take a look at like some of the things. So if I start to type something like function, um, right, you'll see like, oh, okay, that's also a keyword. You don't even need to know the language to know like, okay, this is a keyword in the language. Maybe I should name like a variable. Obviously you wouldn't name it function in this language, but you might better do that in another language, right? And then we'll come over here, we'll type function. And you'll see like, okay, this is a keyword too. Now this is pretty close. Like I have these lines and then like, it's more of like a filled in box. Uh, so you're not gonna get it perfectly one-to-one, -one, like I said, but it's pretty close. But yeah, that's pretty much it for this video for selling, setting up uh, LSP item kind labels. Um, you're just gonna need to add, basically just add this to your COC settings and you'll have what I have. Like I said, you're going to need a font that kind of supports this, though. So that's it for this video. I'll see you guys in the next one. Uh, make sure to like and subscribe.